Good morning, you too. Okay, so today I decided that I would show you how I set up my palette. This is, these are the base paints I use, uh, meaning you can virtually make any color out of this palette, or with this palette. So, um, for starters, um, I use Gamblin Titanium Zinc White. So this is the color I use most of. I'll put like, you know, a lot of my palette to start. I use, and I'll just kind of go through like the rainbow. Um, as far as yellows, I use this Indian yellow. It's a nice, pungent, very strong color. And I set up my yellows on the right side of the palette. Um, and I'll kind of just go along. I use a cadmium yellow light. Most of my paints are Gamblin. Um, I have a few Williamsburg, a few Old Holland. I think I used most of Gamblin because the price point's really good and the quality is really, really nice. I kind of prefer Williamsburg and Old Holland though, just for the pigment load. The pigment load is much higher than the Gamblin. Or significantly higher, I'm not sure. But the, um, and what that means is it just means that there's more pigment to linseed ratio. So the paint doesn't run out as fast and yeah, you get more bang for your buck. So as far as reds, I do cadmium red light and I also put that on the right side of the palette. I like to divide them. Now it's kind of a habit. I'll go, I know exactly where they're in the palette so I can be more efficient. And really, really, it's all about efficiency. That's why I, paint, I lay my paints all like this. So when I'm painting and I need a refill of a color, I can just turn to the right grab it and go. I use Alizarin Crimson. This is a very strong color so I only use a little bit of this. Again on the right side of the palette. You can see I only use a little smudge of each because I don't really want to waste it so if I need a refill no problem. Okay and I think that's what I usually use for reds. I do have Quinacridone Magenta, on Red, Napesol, but I don't typically use those colors. So I have a few others that I just, you know, that are supplemental that I'll keep on here. Um, definitely add some yellow ochre to my palette. That's a staple. So. Okay, now as far as greens, right now I'm working on a jungle scene, so I need a lot of greens. Um, well, a few greens, because I usually uh, mix my own. But I use this sap green, it's also a very strong pungent color, so I only put a little bit of that on my palette. And I put that just to the left of the yellow and the reds. Um, obviously, the olive green, that's a big one on my palette usually. Um, olive green is really, really good for skin tones as well. Um, right now I've been using a little bit of the emerald green. It's kind of a weird color. It's like pasty white and kind of cool with like blue undertones. Um, I have phthalo green on here, Viridian, which I don't really use as much. Sarah Leanne, I really love. That's a staple on my palette. So this one goes in the middle, and I'll show you kind of how it's shaping up here. As you can see, just a little dab. I really, really don't want to waste paints. They're very expensive. Um, this one has become a staple in my palette. I might have mentioned this before, but this is the, it's um, an Old Holland blue-gray. It's kind of a powdery sky blue, but I really, really like it for its mixing qualities. So I'll put that right next to the Sarah Leon. Um, I also really dig Mars Violet right now. I mentioned that in my last video. It's like a violet maroon. And I'll keep that away from my browns because I often misconstrue it with the Burnt Sienna. Um, they look very, very similar in the palette and you definitely don't want to mix those up because this is warm, the Burnt, the burnt Sienna, and the Mars Violet's very cool. It has like uh, blue undertones. Uh, this one's Payne's Gray. This one... Um, just for the record, I never use black. Um, black tends to have a lot of flat qualities depending on which one you use. So in order to achieve a nice rich black, I usually blend the Van Dyke Brown and Payne's Gray. This one is the Raw Umber. I like the Williamsburg 
brand of that. And we've got burnt sienna, another staple. I keep this in my browns. Then we've got Van Dyke Brown. And we have the Burnt Umber. And last but not least, my favorite color of all time. It is the Chevigny Warm Gris by Old Holland. Um, this color is amazing, and I'll talk about this a lot. You should definitely get it. I mix it with a lot of different colors. <clears throat> All right, so I think that's it. Um, I'm thinking I did add a little Naples yellow, so that's good. Well, let me see if I forget anything. Um, lately, I have been using a little bit of this Venetian red. It's a really interesting earth tone color with um, orange undertones. So I'll put a little bit of that on there as well. And now I'm going to show you my final palette. So, all right, this is how it looks. Okay. So I lay it out again like this, so all the colors are in their own, um, they're in their own, you know, sphere. So I have the warms, the warm reds and oranges and yellows over here. I've got the greens, and then I have that weird Mars violet color. I like to keep that one separate because it's it can be misconstrued for a red or the brown. And then I have my blues in the center, and then I have all my earth tones over here, um, and then I always keep my white on the left. Now I've always put my paints on a board like this, and I set it on my lap. And what's good about this board is you know I can use it to prop my elbow on, kind of like to the side, and that way I can get a nice steady hand when I paint. I don't know. All right, my supreme apologies that my camera died. I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Um, basically on the back of the bottle it says the refined linseed oil is the palest of linseed oils. This slows the drying time of the oil and creates viscosity. So if you're looking to just have more fluidity in your paints, you're going to dab your brush in here and use a little bit. I put my linseed oil in these little caps that I collect. I have them laying all over the place. But it just kind of contains everything and makes it much, much easier. Um, and then last but not least, I use this gray pad, the New Wave brand. It's disposable, probably not the best for the environment, but I just don't want to waste my time scraping all the paints off and cleaning it that way. I just find it very efficient to use these and then peel one off when I need a new one. So if you have any questions, please leave them below and I will be sure to cover more material and answer those at my earliest convenience. I really, really appreciate for listening, taking the time to subscribe to my channel and sit in with me while I describe my palette. So happy painting and I'll talk to you soon.